Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Recruit Review. Steven Ostentoski here of MGOFISH bringing you episode 10. We're in double digits here covering today four-star safety out of Oradell, New Jersey, Jordan Morant. Again, on episodes 8 and 9, you guys absolutely killed it with my 75 light goal. I'm going to up it again, see if you guys can get there. I think you can. You guys have been absolutely crushing it. 100 likes on episode 10. On this episode, I'll bring you two episodes next week on Sunday and Wednesday. So get those in. I appreciate all the support thus far. Again, as always, the poll is up here. Let me know who you want to see in the comments below. That's enough. Let's get into it. All right, Jordan Rant. Virgin Catholic powerhouse program out of New Jersey. His head coach is Vito Campanile. Campanile? I'm terrible with names. Anyways, he's the brother of Anthony Campanile. I'm I'm butchering it. <laughs> but Anthony, he was a defensive assistant coach uh, for 2019 at linebackers. He's now with the Dolphins. So his brother, Vito, is the head coach at Virgin Catholic. Um, he played all over the place in high school, cornerback, nickel corner, safety, uh, really all over the place wherever the defense needed him. There's a rumor from his coach that he gave up three completions as a junior. That would be insane, but even so, obviously a huge part of a defense of a large program. Uh, he's also an early enrollee at Michigan. So let's look at his stats. So right away, want to get it out there. He had an injury his senior year, broken foot early in the season. He was selected for the All-American Bowl and Polynesian Bowl and obviously didn't play in those because of the injury. Rumors that it was career-threatening, I don't know how true those are. Obviously, foot injuries are no joke, so crossing the fingers that he improves there. The benefit of him being an early enrollee is that Michigan can uh, look through that rehabilitation of that. So as a senior, given that shorter season, only 12 tackles, one pass breakup, he had a kickoff return for touchdown as well. Junior year, full season, 60 tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack, seven pass breakups, four picks. Sophomore year, 36 tackles, three tackles for loss, and three pass breakups. Looking at his rankings here, Rivals, ESPN 247, they all have him as a four-star. Rivals is the least bullish on him. They have him as the 23 safety, number seven out of New Jersey. ESPN and 247 like, can like him a little bit more. Uh, 190 on the national ranking from ESPN, 122 nationally from 247, right around number nine safety and uh, anywhere from two in New Jersey to six, depending on who you ask, 247 or, or ESPN. His composite brings him just outside of the top 150 and the number 10 safety in the country. All sites have him listed around six foot 190. Looking at his metrics, so his 40 of 4.69 doesn't appear all that impressive. It was a 2018 time, so I'd expect that to be a little bit better. He plays a lot faster than that, so I'd expect him probably firmly in the 4 or 5 range, if not at least low 4 sixes. His shell time of 4.22, another thing I think he plays a little bit faster at, but that's still a good time that's acceptable for his safety. I think it's, uh, again, something he plays better than he tests. His vertical of 35 is solid, not elite, but very good, I would say. His offer list is very impressive. Penn State, Texas A&M, USC, Bama, Clemson, LSU, Miami, Ohio State, Notre Dame, a lot of other programs I didn't mention as well. Two notables outside of that that maybe aren't powers, but Duke and Stanford, so a high academic guy. I love to see those offers on a guy's offer list there. All right, looking at his recruitment, so Penn State was the presumed leader for a while. The original plan for him was to commit at the All-American Bowl. He made his verbal before then to Michigan. He was recruited as a corner safety viper, so given he is kind of of the viper mold, his skill set, Michigan was giving him the opportunity to fill into multiple spots there, so we'll see where he actually ends up. We'll get to that in the film and my projection later on in this video. While committed to Michigan, though, he visited Texas A&M, Penn State, USC, so he had a couple of visits, wasn't completely 100% while he was committed to Michigan. Obviously, eventually he stuck with them, and I'm pretty happy he did. So let's look at his scouting real quick. So first thing that stands out is he's a thumper. So he started high school as a linebacker. He resembles a linebacker in a lot of his play. Very eager in run support, ability to play extremely physical, has excellent closing speed, and can tackle well in open space. He really affects people. Very good hip explosion into the, his hits, really delivers a great pop. But he's a safety, and he actually has very good pass coverage, Great ability to open his hips, quick and explosive when changing direction. Show that so that shuttle speed I was mentioning that he plays a little bit faster than I think this 
uh, comes into these skills here. So great athleticism at the position. He has a combination of size, speed, strength to do a lot of things that make it really tough on wide receivers given his physical nature. Very good jam when he's in press coverage, and his ball tracking skills uh, are very impressive, and I agree with this as well. So some of the downsides, still learning technique. There's some things he can clean up, as always, out of high school. Rerouting a receiver, something he can improve on. Sometimes I think at times he's a little bit too physical with wide receivers. That's another thing that uh, I, I want to ensure that he firms up there. Has to improve his speed. This is probably a big one at 4.69. I don't think that's accurate, but obviously if that is, could be an issue with some quicker H-back types and improve backpedal and footwork technique and coverage. I do think he relies a lot on athleticism right now in coverage, so he can definitely improve upon uh, those sort of coverage techniques that he uh, could possibly use in college and will use. All right, let's move right into his film. All right, I'm actually going to start with his special teams because he's a guy who has an affinity for blocking kicks. So shades of Klee Hudson there a little bit, who blocked obviously his fair number of kicks uh, while at Michigan. So he has the ability to take back kicks on kick return as well. Here's another punt block. He had like three uh, field goal blocks on his film, so that's great to see. But he, he he does have the athleticism, obviously, in upper divisions here of New Jersey, and he displays pretty decent speed here to pull away from guys on kickoffs. So I don't see him using that in college just because Michigan has better guys at the kick return position to better utilize there. But it's good to see this sort of athleticism uh, at least at a higher uh, high school level. So I think he's a guy who will be excellent all around on special teams for Michigan. All right, these next three are hitting in space. So he does really well operating in space with that athleticism. He breaks down extremely well, gets load, leads with his shoulder, still delivers a good pop despite breaking down, shows very good hip explosion into contact as well. So working off of blocks here, this is something I really think is important to see for safeties in run support. A few clips here. Uh, shows the ability to engage with guys, then use his hands to disengage and make the play. So again, this is something I don't see enough of in film. I think it's very important, and he has an affinity for it. This is probably my favorite section here, coming down on passes. Let's just pause for this first clip. Oh my god, dude is a missile. So whether it's a screen or a pass out of the backfield, he is excellent at screaming upfield, breaking down and taking really good angles, good timing, and again, just really good hits. He's really affecting people, really good explosion through the hips. He has good form wrapping up here as well. Not he's, you know, guys aren't bouncing off or probably won't bounce off. He's really taking the legs out of most of these people. So I, I love how clean he hits. So he's leading with his shoulder, head up, and just wrapping up extremely well. So that's something that takes the air out of guys. So really, really good here. Only a couple clips here of blitzes. I think this is something we'll see a lot at Michigan. He has affinity coming off the edge with that skill set. This next clip, he really destroys quarterback here. But didn't see any up the middle, so I still want to see that. But I think blitzing will be a huge part of his repertoire in college. All right, and this is the lengthiest section, his coverage skills. So lots of plays here. He was deployed as a cornerback a ton in high school. His head coach said that they would put him on a guy just to completely eviscerate them from the field, from the from the game, and he did so. Obviously, that comment I made earlier, three completions, all he gave up his junior year. I'm skeptical, but this is still impressive. So he played both press and off man, as well as in zone. So he played kind of all different flavors here. Watch the physicality here while he's in uh, while he's in press coverage. He may have to tone this down a bit, but I would rather teach a guy to be less physical than have to try to teach them to be more physical. So he's tracking people step for step, really using leverage with the sideline extremely well, and he times really well when he's not in press coverage. So whether it's zone or he's off man. He does very well to time those. And these are a couple of the routes that are toughest to get, these wheel routes or these uh, fade routes. And he's sticking with these guys stride for stride, turning around at the perfect time there to get the pass break up. So I think he could be a corner, really. I think his skill set as a safety is just more valuable than a true corner. And he does have a few picks here. First one is a really, really tough catch on a low thrown ball. So he has adequate, if not above average, ball skills at the position, definitely for a safety. So I, I love the way he breaks on the ball there for this pick and that um, held true in, in his other uh, film that I didn't show here or showed earlier. So uh, love to see that. Love to see him making diving plays like this. Uh, I like his off ball skills probably more than his on ball skills just because he has really good instincts, but um, a guy who, who has seemingly good hands and that'll, you know, obviously come in handy. 
All right, so for his comparison, I had a tough time with this because he's not quite similar to past Vipers. He's not the athletic freak that Jabril Peppers was. He's also maybe an inch or two taller and a little more, more lean, and he's a bit more fluid than Cleek Hudson. Cleek Hudson was like an undersized linebacker, where I think Jordan Morant here is, is more fluid than what we saw out of Cleek Hudson. So I'm going to go outside of Michigan here. I'm looking at the fourth round pick out of Clemson in the 2020 draft. Kevon Wallace. So this guy was a low three star out of high school. He was undersized. He's about six foot 175 out of high school. He's bulked up. He's in the 210 to 15 range right now. And I'll read off some of his skills from his draft profile here as I show some film. So best when flying downhill provides some pass rush ability as blitzed off the edge or middle uh, too quick for most offensive linemen to pick up on those blitzes striker when coming down to attack the ball carrier delivers great pop on his hits not so he's not just a thumper he's good in coverage as well does better in zone than man due to his ability to read the quarterback he has plus ball skills athleticism to bring them back as well versatile to play several positions played nickel cornerback free safety and strong safety at clemson and good football iq downsides with speed isn't that great he ran mid four fives at the combine and a little undersized for covering tight ends. But really, a lot of those sound exactly like what Michigan can expect out of Jordan Morant. It feels like Jordan Morant might have been a, uh, further along than Kevon Wallace was. Wallace was out of Virginia. I don't think he was at a larger program. So uh, being at Virgin Catholic gave Morant a little bit more time to shine. So going off of that projection, so 247 has a projected as a second or third round pick i think that makes sense a higher end safety that's usually about your ceiling so given his athleticism uh speed is the only thing i could see that could hold him back maybe a little bit from uh, being drafted that high but i don't think it's that outlandish as far as his time at michigan so i think he would slot in well at a viper but i want him in coverage more i think he has such plus ability there as a safety that i want him to i want to ensure that he has both opportunities so Given that, plus Michigan is pretty set at the Viper position already. We have Mike Barrett going into 2020. You also have Anthony Solomon, Joey Velasquez, and then two other fresh freshmen I haven't covered yet, Will Mohan and RJ Moten. So Jordan Morant's a guy who I think slots better for a true safety, probably a stronger safety, I think. So right now you have Dax Hill and Brad Hawkins. Those are the starters. Behind them, kind of some unknowns in Quentin Johnson, Sammy Faustin, as well as the German Green and Jimon Green brothers where we haven't really seen yet as well. So I think that's where uh, he needs to be as a true safety. I think given his positional flexibility, he'll have a great opportunity in 2021 onwards. Now, the main thing I, I am concerned about is speed and that foot injury, right? How quick can he get back from that? How quick can he bounce back? As long as he is healthy, I wouldn't mind burning that red shirt in 2020. He offers such high ability in special teams. I want him to get that experience, get some exposure after next year where Michigan won't have Brad Hawkins. Dax Hill will be going into his final year. So I think it'll be valuable to get a guy like Jordan Morant in the in the wings ready to uh, compete for a starting position as a true sophomore. So that's, you know, he's a smart guy as well, given the Stanford and Duke offers. So his ability to pick up the defense quickly should be there. So I'd, I'd expect him to at least compete, if not start in his sophomore year, true sophomore year, 2021. Only reason I would maybe give a redshirt in 2020 is if he's not healthy. So really excited for him. I think his ceiling is second or third round. And um, I, I think it's a great get overall. And that's it, guys. That's all I have for episode 10. Thanks again for all the support thus far. Remember, 100 likes and you get two episodes next week, Sunday and Wednesday. Let me know who you want to see. Follow me on Twitter at Steven Toski. Beyond that, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and as always, go blue.